Well, hello there, Anxious Cynic, back again for part four of our Minimator 2 tutorial series. And today we're going to cover how to use constraints, parenting, IK, paths, all the little advanced doodads that you would need for an animation. So to get started, let's just go ahead and make Steve uh, carry something. So we've got our Steve character here. I'm going to go ahead and select him. Doesn't really matter. We're going to go ahead and bring in an item. So I'm just going to click on item here. Sword is default selected. Let's just bring in a sword and you can see we're dragging it around there. It doesn't really matter because we want this to be at the zero position. So we're going to select it, go over here, zero it out. So now we're at zero. So with this item selected, we're going to go over here to parent. We're going to select Steve, drop down, body and make it his right arm. So there we go. It's parented, but you can see the kind of rotation point here of the sword is not where we want it to be. I'm just going to go ahead and try to position that about where I would want it though first. And we need to make a custom rotation point for this. So we come over here to custom rotation point, enable, and then now we have these options here. And I'm just going to play with this until I get it where I want it to be. Maybe somewhere around the handle there. So let's say about 3.5. And what if we do 3.5 on both of them? Looks pretty good to me. So then we can rotate it basically about 90 degrees, negative 90 in this case. And boom, Steve is holding the sword. And the reason we parented it is so that when we select his arm and we move it, it moves with him. If it's not parented, then you would just position that and his arm would move independently. And now you can see under right arm, we have a drop down for the item. All right, so now that we've got the basics of parenting covered, let's move on to paths. So I'm just going to go over here, bring in a path, create it. You don't actually see anything right away because there are no points to the path. If I click this, then you'll see that we do have like an origin point of the path. Let me just go ahead and zero that out as well. And uh, what we want to do is add a point. So we come over here in our path properties, you'll see add point, click that and nothing changed because it's basically the first and only point we have so we're just going to leave that one there and what i can do i can select this and add another point or i can actually just duplicate points here so first let me go ahead and drag this out and then now you'll see that we have a path from point a to point b they're not labeled that way but you get the idea so what i can do now that that one's created i'm going to go down here right click and duplicate right there or alternatively i can hit Control d so if I do that, you'll see we kind of got a little extra going on there and then we do like that and we have a path. And the cool thing about paths is, look at that, we're creating a bit of a curve there. So that's pretty cool. I can even select two paths at the same time or two points at the same time. Let's do like so and drag these out. I'm going to do like that. So we're gonna give a little bit of a Arky do something like that. Let's just drag it up a bit and Very cool. And then we're gonna go over here. Let's hit control D duplicate and just do like so and Of course, we've only been moving that along two axes. So let's actually select this one and Kind of turn it in a little bit. Maybe this one will go a little bit over here and you'll see that we're creating a very smooth curve object here. Okay, so what can we do with that? Well, a number of things, but for now, we're just gonna focus on something simple. We're gonna have Steve walk along this path. So what I'm gonna do, for the sake of the tutorial here, we're just gonna give him an automatic walk cycle. Actually, let's do a run cycle this time. So what we can do, since we now have this path, we're gonna select the root object of Steve. We're gonna go to constraints, and this is the constraints portion of the tutorial and we're gonna go to follow path and then we're gonna select our path. Now obviously if you're gonna have multiple paths you wanna name these and not just have path, 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 path. But for now we only have one so we don't really don't really worry about that. So there you see Steve's orientation just changed. Also you may notice that I made an error. I had the timeline marker here and that created a keyframe. So what we have here is Steve not on the path and then suddenly on the path. We don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is delete that keyframe. I'm gonna highlight both of these because I want both of these keyframes to be Steve parented to the path. Path timeline, path, and then now we have Steve on the path. But you'll notice that there's a little bit of a problem. Nothing's happening. Steve is just running in place. This isn't what we want. So what we're gonna do is go to the second keyframe. We're gonna go to offset. And we drag that along and you'll see that Steve is moving along our path 
and we can drag that up until he reaches the end and it kind of doesn't matter what number it is beyond that point as long as he reaches the end and we'll leave it just like so and now when we go back Steve is running along the path so let's go ahead and create a little bit of a loop region here so we can play this in a loop and watch what's going on here so you can kind of see that Steve's not really moving fast enough and uh, we don't want that it looks like he needs to be running a bit faster for the speed of which his run animation is so I'm gonna take this keyframe and bring it in and then that's gonna make him run faster along the path I don't really know what the good timing is here so I'm just gonna kind of wing it there but you'll see that he is smoothly running along this path okay look at that So that's one very cool way to animate smooth movements in my animator 2 now. You can dang old have him go anywhere you want without having to animate all those little turns and you see here we adjusted the elevation and everything. If you were animating this manually by just adjusting Steve's position, this would be more time consuming to get all those movements and especially to make them look good as smooth as this. You wouldn't be able to do that. So this is a really cool easy way to get those smooth movements. Now something I need to mention, uh, you may notice here, we are in Minimator 2, the default not community build. Uh, there's some features coming to the community build that haven't yet been finalized, so I'm just using what version everyone can have access to right now. Maybe later on, once that version is released, we'll come back and show some of the new features that might be being implemented. Uh, but for now, we're just using default Minimator 2. All right, so with that out of the way, another thing to note is we can actually adjust certain things about Steve. So uh, if you watch this, when he comes around these curves, He's got a bit of a lean to him. Maybe we don't want Steve to lean like that. So if you remember from our last tutorial when I covered animation and how keyframes work, you need to make sure your timing is set up before you make any adjustments to the root of Steve or you need to parent him to a folder first. But uh, for the sake of this tutorial, we're just gonna move on with what we got. So I'm just gonna place a keyframe there. And when Steve comes here, He's uh, defying gravity. Not that he wasn't up here, but you know what I mean. So we're just gonna create another keyframe there and we're gonna tilt him up a little bit. Right here, he needs to be tilted a little bit. He's a very unstable guy, Steve is, so that's kind of disturbing. It's a little dangerous, I would say. And for this one, he's still leaning and that's because he's following, I think like the, the Z of our path or something like that. But anyway, you can edit that and then you can see He's staying right side up like a good boy. And even once he's reached the end of his path, let's go ahead and get rid of our loop there, turn all that off. Uh, I can actually continue to animate him off of the path. Oops, hang on, gotta not have that keyframe selected. Create a new keyframe. And then even when he's constrained to the path, we can continue animating and whatnot. But, you know, typically he's at this point, we would want him to just you know, stop and not be on the path anymore. So I can actually create another keyframe. Let's say we'll just take this one here and we're gonna turn off that constraint, turn the path timeline constraint to none. And then that puts Steve right back to his original position of whatever these values are here in the position thing, whatever words. So we can go ahead and reset those parameters and then drag them over. So like if you had a scene in this case, then you would wanna try to, you know, mimic Steve's position here. Whoa. And uh, look at that, he goes, he goes rather crazy between those two, but that's because he's coming off of the timeline between these two keyframes. What you would wanna do is set this one to instant. And then, did I get that perfect? Oh, almost. That is so almost perfect that you can barely tell because of that movement he's doing. You can hardly tell that he slightly changed his position. And then from there, you could continue animating Steve, uh, you know, however you like. What you could probably do here since he ends at that point, just as a, wait a second, I got the wrong keyframe selected again. What you can probably do here if you want to make that a little bit more seamless. Now you can hide these kinds of things with camera angles and whatnot, but just for the sake of what we're doing here in the dirt today, we're going to take the position of our last point here, which is where Steve actually does end up. So that's 50.9. So I'm going to hit control C to copy that. And let me drop this down so I can get these keyframes a little more easily. 
and control V for Steve in there. Select this one, get the Y, control C, control V, and there we go. Steve is in the exact same position when we take him off of the path as he was when he was on it. So there is no seam there. We can do that and then continue animating Steve completely pathless from this point on. All right, finally, we're gonna cover IK. So if you notice in uh, my animator, typically you can only animate with FK, meaning you can just adjust the position and rotation of things. And there's nothing to really anchor them. If I wanted Steve to do like a handstand or say if I want to move Steve's body, you'll see that his, uh, his legs move with him and nothing is uh, anchored to the ground, let's say. So let's actually do some IK constraints. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bring in a random thing. It doesn't matter. I'm just gonna use a sphere because, you know, Minecraft doesn't have circles. So just drop that in, zero out its position. Well, hang on, that's Steve. Uh, zero out its position. And just so it's easily identifiable and manipulate, I'm just gonna give it a custom rotation point, make it the center. This is all just kind of extra stuff. You ain't gotta worry about this. Uh, I'm gonna, link all the scale parameters and scale it down so it's out of the way just like so so I'm just move it over so we can see it and this is going to be our ik target so what i'm actually going to do is call this one ik target and since we're going to have it on the left leg i'm going to say left leg of course you can name these whatever you want this is just for organizational purposes so with that i'm going to select steve's leg and then we have constraints You'll see follow path is dropped down because we were using it earlier, but I'm gonna tick that up. And then now we have inverse kinematics and we have target. I'm gonna select our sphere, boop, and you'll see that Steve's leg is now following it. And we also have angle target. So what you'll see is when I move Steve around, his leg is wanting to always orient towards that sphere there. Let's go ahead and move this over actually, like something like that, maybe about at two. So it should be aligned with the default position of Steve, just like so. So now he's standing like a normal person, maybe a little bit. And uh, what you'll see is when we do this, Steve's leg follows it but as soon as we go at an angle here you see how it's kind of just is uh bending very unnaturally that would be very painful to turn your leg almost 180 degrees around so what we need is an angle target so what i'm going to do actually is just duplicate this Control d and i'm going to rename this one ik ang target so now we've got that little distinction there and I'm just gonna pull this up. And since it's just a little angle target, I'm gonna make it smaller just so it's distinct in our scene. And I can select Steve's leg, go down here to angle target and select ang target. So what happens now is when we move Steve, his leg is bending backwards. But if we take this angle target and we move it, you'll see that it's keeping his leg forward. So no matter where we go, Steve's leg will now always try to face that and that way you don't get those unwanted rotations on your IK object in your scene. This might be a little more obvious. Let's say if we uh, take Steve and bring him down so that we get a bend in the leg and then we do like this, you'll see that that bend is always trying to face that angle target. So we do like that, you'll see that we can adjust, you know, how his leg is bending to get different poses and positions for Steve there. So you can see how this would be beneficial. Let's say you want your character hanging or whatever, you can put IK targets on both arms and uh, Steve will always be, you know, anchored to whatever his arms are pointing at. So you could have him hanging, do some kind of cool animations in that way. Uh, but for this example, you see how it works with the legs. Now, one thing to note about these IK targets is that they are gonna render. So what we wanna do, and typically you would wanna do this on your first one if you're gonna be duplicating these, so that way that setting would be inherited every time you duplicate. But we can just select both of these, and then we're gonna go over here to Appearance, and we're gonna go to HQ Hiding. Before I actually show that, let me take Steve, bring him up so that we can see those right now, and I can turn on rendering, and you'll see that we still see those. So let me turn that off. Select both of these, turn off, 
HQ are turned on, or HQ hiding, and then when we do render mode, boom, they're not there. So when you render, your IK targets will not be in the final animation, but you'll see them perfectly fine while you're animating. So that's gonna do it for this tutorial. That's the basics of those functions. Maybe we'll get into some more advanced uses of them later on. Who knows? Thanks for watching. Bye.